Watch the ball, keep your eye on the ball. We all know what we're supposed to do because we've heard it a million times. We need to track the ball onto the strings and we need to zone in on that contact point, just like Federer does or Daniil Medvedev or Naomi Osaka. The reason it's so important to focus on that contact point is because doing so allows our brain to make the necessary movement adjustments to increase our consistency and allow us to deal with the different types of shot. The problem is, it can be very challenging for a lot of people to do because a lot of people's visual systems simply aren't able to do the different visual skills that are involved. And that's why I've made this video to show you four different training drills that are gonna help you to track the ball more efficiently so you can time the ball better and so you can hit with more consistency. I hope you find this video helpful. If you do, it'd be awesome if you could give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to my channel and get the notifications turned on. Before I show you the drills, just gonna give you a little bit of background so you understand why you're gonna do what we're about to do. And also to help you understand why ball tracking can be so challenging for so many people. When it comes to tracking a moving target like a ball, we've got two types of eye movement. If the ball's going slowly, we can follow it in a continuous motion, and that's called a smooth pursuit. But when the ball's going really quickly, our eyes can only move at a certain speed going smoothly, so what we actually have to do is make lots of little switches to try and stay ahead of the ball so we can still stay focused on it. So we need to make sure that we train both of those visual skills because there's different brain areas involved. We need to cover all of our bases so that then we can deal with the different types of shot but it's more than just the visual system. Now, if I'm just standing still tracking a ball, then what I've just said applies. But as you know, when you play tennis, you don't just stand still and track a ball. You start with your split step, you're doing some kind of unit turn as you move to the ball. There's this movement going on. There's a lot of movement from the head, especially in those final moments of tracking. Now, why this is important is, We've got special sensors in our inner ear. It's called our vestibular system. It's our balance system. It's got a number of really important functions in the body, like keeping the spine stable, allowing us to keep our head still on contact with a tennis ball. But one of the big things that it does is there's a reflex that helps you to keep your eyes focused on a moving target or on a target as your head moves. So a lot of people, they might have visual skills, so the smooth tracking and the fast switches that are working just fine, but they can really struggle with the head movement component because the system in the inner ear isn't working optimally. So what we need to do is we need to train the eye movements, but we also need to train the balance system to make sure that it's all working so we've got the best possible chance of tracking the ball all the way onto the strings so that we're trying to keep our focus on and around that contact point so our brain can make all the adjustments that it needs to in order to increase our level of consistency. So that's why we're gonna be doing four drills. We're gonna be doing two different visual drills, the smooth movements and the switches, and then we're gonna be doing two different drills for the balance system so that as that final movement comes in, your body's rotating, your head's rotating, you can still keep track of the ball, hopefully watch it onto the strings and increase your consistency. Okay, so now let's go for the drills. We're gonna start out with smooth pursuits. We're gonna be doing three reps in eight different directions. The reason that we're doing eight different directions is we've got different eye muscles. We need to activate all of those muscles and we need to make sure that our eyes can track in all the different directions that we might need to follow a ball on court. I'm gonna be using my thumb as a target. So I'm gonna hold my arm out at arm's length. I'm looking at my thumbnail. I'm gonna stand nice and tall with good posture, try and keep my head nice and still. And I'm just gonna move the target out to the left and then back to the middle following it with my eyes. Notice that I'm using a small range of motion and I'm going fairly slowly. So I'm not taking it all the way out there, challenging the system too much and creating eye strain. I'm just going nice and small, back to the middle. So just go for three reps and then change to the other side. So out to the right and back to the middle. Out to the right, back to the middle. And it sounds silly, but your goal is to track the target as well as you can. And then gonna go down. A lot of people, when they start doing this, the eyes are leaving the target and they're not following it. So you've got to really consciously look at your thumbnail. And then gonna go upwards. Again, keeping my head as still as I can. Following the target with my eyes. And then gonna go for the diagonals. So I'm gonna go up and right. Again, nice and small in terms of the range of motion. Nice and steady with the speed, trying to keep my head as still as I can. You also wanna stay nice and relaxed. I shouldn't be gritting my teeth, I shouldn't be tensing anything, I shouldn't be you know, clenching my fist. Everything should be nice and relaxed. It should just be the eyes 
that are doing the trekking. Again, make sure that you follow the target as smoothly as possible. And then the final direction, down and left. Okay, so that's it, really simple. Drill number one, smooth pursuits. For drill number two, we're gonna be doing fast eye switches. We still wanna hit the eight different directions, but we're gonna be doing it by using two different targets. So we're gonna go horizontal, vertical, and then the two different diagonals. Everything I've just talked about holds true. We want to stay nice and tall. We want to stay nice and relaxed, nice and relaxed breathing, trying to keep the head as still as possible. So I'm just gonna go for 10 switches to start with in each direction. and then change and go for vertical. Change the diagonals. And then the final diagonal. So nice and simple. Cicades, fast eye switches. For drill number three, we're gonna to start to work on the balance system. We're gonna do an exercise called VOR, where my job is to look at my thumb, turn my head, keep my eyes focused on the thumb. Now, because you're training your balance system, if this system isn't working well, you might feel lightheaded or dizzy or nauseous or something like that. If that happens, stop and rest and don't continue until you feel better. Again, we're gonna be going for those eight different directions because of the eye muscles and because of the different receptors in the balance system. I also want you to start nice and low with the reps. So just three reps in each direction, fairly slowly. Make sure you keep your eyes locked on the target and then you can build it up over time. So I'm gonna go three reps to the left, just keeping my eyes focused on that target. Three reps to the right, eyes focused on the target. Three reps up. Now, as you're doing this, really try and keep the target that you're looking at nice and clear. I'm gonna go downwards. It doesn't necessarily matter which hand that I do this with. I could use either hand, but I'm just gonna switch partway through. So now the diagonals, I'm gonna go up and right. The whole time, keep my eyes focused on that target. And that's the really important part. A lot of people, when they do this, their eyes leave the target, and that's gonna cause you a major problem in terms of your ability to focus on the ball as you start to move towards it. Okay, final diagonal, three reps. Okay, so that's what the VOR looks like. Start slow, start small like I did, and then you can build that up over time once you know that your body can handle it. Fourth and final drill is gonna be a VORC. So what we're gonna be doing is holding our thumb out, looking at our thumbnail again, and this time we're gonna turn our head and our thumb at the same speed. So it's gonna train your visual system, train your balance system. It's also gonna train a little bit of coordination as well. Now as I do this, I wanna try and think about my nose being connected to my thumb so they move at the same speed. So what I don't want to happen is I don't wanna take my head to there and my thumb is over there somewhere. So try and keep a connection between the two. And again, we're gonna go for three reps, eight different directions. I'm gonna change hands. Notice that I'm starting small. I'm going fairly slowly again. I'm not using the maximum range of motion that I can. I'm not going as fast as I can. Make sure your body can handle it. And then you can start to increase things and make things more challenging. So just going through the different directions, the eight points of the compass. Again, really focus I'm watching the target. I know it sounds silly, but the more consciously you focus on the target, the more you engage with the drills, the better it's gonna be for training your systems and the more it's gonna improve your ball tracking. Okay, one more rep in that direction. And then I've just got the downward diagonals. Final diagonal. Okay, so that's the last drill, VORC. Okay, so there are four different drills. You can use that as a nice little program. So like I said, start slow, start small, keep the ranges comfortable, don't cause any eye strain, don't cause yourself any problems. Once you know your system can handle it, then you can start to build up and you can work on it over time. You can also use this as a warm up before you step on court. A lot of people find they go through these drills, keep the number of reps low, and it really helps you to start hitting the ball more cleanly and tracking the ball better before you play. Now, a couple of final thoughts. There's a couple of things that I mentioned when I went through those different drills about keeping your head still and about following the targets and stuff like that. If you aren't able to do any of those things, 
you know, even if it's only slight, if you're trying to track a target and you lose the target, if you're making eye switches and, and your head's moving, or if you're trying to move your head and keep your eyes on a target and you lose that target, all those things, they might seem small, but they are gonna be causing you huge problems in terms of your ability to track the ball, and it is gonna be causing you major issues with your performance on a tennis court. Now, hopefully by doing what I've just showed you, you can make improvements in all those areas but sometimes you need to dig a little bit deeper. And that's really what I help tennis players with. I help tennis players to train their visual system, to resolve these type of issues so that they can track the ball better, so they can time the ball better, so they can hit more consistently, so they've got better focus and concentration. So if you'd like to learn more about that, I'd love to help you. There's a link down below where we can schedule a free chat and then I can learn more about your game and see if it's something that we can work on together. Also, if when you do any of those drills, you feel bad when you do them, that's another indication that your system isn't function, functioning optimally. Now, I don't want you to push yourself through and make yourself feel bad. Stop and take a rest. If it keeps happening, you should probably get checked out medically just to be safe. It's normally fine. It just normally means that you need to do a little bit of training. Again, that might be something that you want a little bit of help with. But also, it's not just about correcting problems. Vision training can be used to really maximize and improve performance. You work on your visual system, you speed your reactions up by a small amount, that helps you get to more balls at the baseline, more balls at the net, can really help you to improve your performance. So again, if you want a little bit of help, just use that link that's down below. I hope you found this video really helpful. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could give me a thumbs up. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them down below and I will try and get back to you as quickly as possible.